Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good day. I plan to, I'm off out uh, to see a friend I haven't seen in a while for a beer and a burger. I have no doubt that when I see him, when we start on the beer, we're going to have a really good bitch about the British lights in World of Tanks. <laughs> Just have a really good moan about them and set the world to rights. But while I'm doing that, we're going to carry on from where we left off in the last Uncharted 4 video. We're almost at the end of the Cathedral Catacombs, but if anyone really believes that we're going to find Henry Avery's treasure here, uh, that we're not just going to find another clue leading to another location, well, what can I say? You must be new here. Okay, getting a bit dramatic with the statues here. Seriously, why decorate a treasure burial site? Or build elaborate tests. I mean, either we're missing something, or Avery was really, really bored. Because it's not a treasure burial site, Sam. I realise this news is not going to make you popular with your Panamanian prison bust-out buddy, but, well, unfortunately it is what it is. Ugh. I'll never get used to this. Another cross. <laughs> At least this one has some jewels on it, right? Whoa, whoa, don't touch it. What? Why? <laughs> Look at it. It's the only valuable thing we've seen in this cave. <sighs> right. This is another test. Agreed. Yeah. Or lack thereof. Okay, so. It's, it's gotta be the coins. Yeah. Are you sure about this? Oh, pretty sure. Pretty sure we'll have to do. Right, just, just one now. Great, I got it. Please don't be a trap. And unless I'm very much mistaken, that's Madagascar. <laughs> you recognize the shape? It's Madagascar. Damn, I'm good. Look, star right here. It's King's Bay. Yes, it is. <laughs> Son of a bitch. He's screwing with this. What are you talking about? Avery, he's screwing with this. This was supposed to be it, so where's the goddamn treasure, huh? I mean, Kings Bay, great, well, what's next? North Pole? Outer space? Nathan. For those who prove worthy, paradise awaits. He, he was recruiting. Who was recruiting? Avery was recruiting. Recruiting for what? <laughs> <laughs> You gentlemen are very, very noisy. Guns on the floor. Slowly. Got to admit, her accent is getting better. Must have known you from last time. Uh, throw me out a window didn't do it for you? Rafe. Rafe, come in. I'm at the graveyard. Nadine, hey, we're here. Yeah, I'm looking at them right now. What? Where are you? Come back to the cathedral. Follow the holes. I'm on my way. And for God's sakes, don't shoot him yet. <laughs> Not want to hurry then. King's Bay. Yeah, but, uh, where in King's Bay? You'll need that cross over there to figure it out, but there's only two people that can tell you how to use it. Let me guess. You two. I'll leave it to Rafe. You're going to be waiting a long time. Sorry, boys. I'm not here to negotiate. Bring me the crucifix. Sneaky one, Sam. It's not a crucifix. What? Well, technically, a crucifix refers to cross the... You know what? Never mind. Don't touch it! Oh, 
Oh look, mercenary armed with an automatic rifle couldn't hit a target from 20 meters away? Standards must be really slipping in the private security business. Actually, it's a fact, they are. It wasn't the case 10 or 15 years ago, but say, oh shit. <laughs> okay. I see handholds. Yeah, we just... Oh, shit. Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> okay. So, stay on the side. They can't shoot you. Which is a lot easier said than done, because this thing's moving. Have to go for it. Yep, made it. Now, if this one would just do me the honour of staying still for a couple of seconds. And... Gotcha. I'll take your pistol. Right. But yes, it is actually a fact that standards have slipped significantly in the private security market over the course of the last 10 to 15 years, uh, particularly since Iraq and Afghanistan. It used to be the case that in order to get employed by a reputable private security firm, um, you had to have some pretty significant military experience. Not necessarily special forces experience, although certainly in the past the overwhelming majority of people employed as private security contractors did have special forces experience but at the very least some significant trigger time in a reputable infantry regiment south african mercenaries in particular were known by being extremely reliable private security contractors with extensive military experience fighting in bush wars in angola mozambique rhodesia the congo this lot, on the other hand, seemed to be so bad at shooting they'd struggle to qualify as an Imperial Stormtrooper. And while a whole bunch of private military companies these days do still employ some very, very good people, uh, a lot of them don't. And that's because of the demand for private military companies in Iraq and Afghanistan, with the military drawing down and handing over the responsibilities to private contractors. So there's a huge demand for the services of private military companies and the companies themselves are having to aggressively compete against each other, often by undercutting each other's bids in order to secure the contracts that are available. And of course, if your contract goes out to the lowest bidder, there's a better than average chance that the bidder who wins the contract is probably not going to be able to recruit or retain the people best qualified for the job. And they're also obviously unlikely to be able to provide the best training and equipment to the people that they do recruit. So while it definitely used to be the case that anybody working for a private military company 10 to 15 years ago was probably going to know their job very, very well because the market at the time was so small. Everybody working in these firms, they all knew each other. So you pretty much only ever got hired on the basis of your reputation by word of mouth from people already working for these firms. And those days are long gone. These days, the demand is so great that any kind of military experience is often good enough to get your foot in the door. And I do mean any kind of military experience. I've seen interviews with people working for private military contractors in Iraq who were in the army, but they were chefs or drivers. Now, I can't speak for other militaries, but in the British Army, at least, if you're a chef or a driver, you will at least have done some form of basic military infantry training. And again, I can't speak for other militaries, but in the British Army, you're a soldier first, and then you're a cook, or a driver, or a storeman, or a clerk second. And when you're deployed operationally, everybody takes their turn going out on patrols. So you've got that basic standard of infantry training, regardless of what your job is. Obviously, you're going to be significantly better trained if you've actually joined an infantry regiment as an infantry soldier. But even if you're not, you've got that basic level of skill and it doesn't decay because when you're deployed, you get to use it, if not on a daily, then at least on a weekly basis. So as far as actual military competence is concerned, yeah, you're a step ahead of a civilian, unless that civilian lives in a bunker in Idaho or Montana. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know one end of a rifle from the other, you've got a basic understanding of first contact drills, but that's really about it. And 
The overwhelming majority of people working for private military contractors these days are recruited at that kind of level. And it really does show. I've seen video footage of a convoy being protected by a private military company in Iraq, come under attack from insurgents, a well-executed ambush, caught them on a bridge, took out the lead vehicle and the rear vehicle, and then started pouring automatic weapon and RPG fire into them. And the result, I can only really describe as barely controlled panic and extremely poorly executed contact drills. I mean, they get points for bailing out of their vehicles instantly the ambush happened, but some of them were bailing out of the vehicles on the engaged side. It was frankly embarrassing to watch, and if it wasn't for the fact that people were actually getting hurt, it would have been quite funny. Uh, and just to put this utter shambles into context for you, technically I could claim to have military experience and be absolutely correct because I was in the Royal Navy. But it's not exactly an infantry regiment, is it? I mean, as far as handling a weapon was concerned, uh, I would do a weapon handling test just to prove that I remembered how to handle a weapon safely uh, every time I went on duty with a weapon. And then I would shoot once a year. And that was it. And with that level of military knowledge, I was watching this ambush and I was cringing at how badly they were making a mess of it. And watching interviews with the survivors afterwards, one of whom was in the British Army as a chef. And he's talking about his experience on joining whichever private military company it was. They quite literally arrived in country, got off the plane, reported in, were given a weapon, and that same afternoon they were out on convoy duty. No pre-deployment training, they didn't get to zero the weapon on the range before they went out on patrol. There was no briefing as to the anticipated threat, it was just grab your rifle and jump in, and that was it. Now when you bear all of that in mind, and you look at the way Nadine Ross's goons couldn't appear to hit the side of the barn from the inside, and in fact would probably have struggled to graduate from the Imperial Academy as a stormtrooper, it's actually not that unrealistic after all. <laughs> right, was that okay? Some kind of scoped rifle? I could have probably used that a minute ago, but well, I've got it now, so it's all good. I'll just grab some spare ammo. Onwards and upwards. How much further do we have to go? Oh, getting shot up by somebody. Not sure where from. Plenty of spare ammo for this rifle line. Right there. Uh, oh, oh, bollocks. No, Jingles, get other side of the crate. <laughs> get, oh, for God's sake, Sam. This crate ain't big enough for the both of us. Where the hell are they? And more importantly, how does this thing... Ooh, ooh. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, we like this. Yeah, this is nice. I think that's it. Top of the ammo. Oh wait, there's another one. For God's sake, Sam, get out of the way. Oh shit, that was close. Set her down. One way or another, we'll get you. Keep running. Don't stop. Coming. I'll eat this for you. No. Step kind of. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Okay, they're right around the corner, so I'm going to use the pistol. I don't know how well this rifle's going to work at close combat. Saying the weather is lovely this time of year. I can't see shit. Just keep heading down until we hit the water. Down? We're going down there? I think so, but I think we're going this way. Ooh, yeah, we'll take this pistol. Oh, will we? Oh, no, no, that's not a good idea. Where's the rifle? Where's the rifle? Jingles, get the rifle. Get the rifle. That's the one. Yes, that's much more like it. Right. Whoa, whoa, jump! I think this is it. Where are we getting shot at from? Ah, oh, crap, they're on the other side. There they are. One. There's another one. No, not there. There. 
I should take care of it. Oh, I didn't take care of it. Okay, I think this is it. I think it's just... Oh shit, grapple, grapple. Whoa, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> Another gravel slide. Wow. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> it's a lot more fun with this rifle. Um, how much further, for God's sake? Oh, I think I'm out of ammo. Yeah, I am. Right, so whatever happens from here on in, we're just running. Oh, actually, no, I can use the... Yeah, that's way better than this double barrel flintlock thing. This has got to be it, surely. And jump. And climb. Yeah, all I have left is the pistol. Where's the plane? And where are we going? Uh, no, not across there. It's got to be down here. That's another slide. I see the plane. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Grapple. Oh, caught it just in time. And we'll release. And get to the plane. That was a lot of fun. One, huh? Shut up my goddamn plane, mate. We're fine, thanks. How soon can you get us to Madagascar? No treasure, then. Not yet. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, we're rich. Jesus. I suppose it's a start. Do you think the rest is in Madagascar? Well, there was a chamber back there with a giant map of Madagascar on the floor, so... Yeah, it's probably there. This is beginning to smell a whole lot like wild goose, kid. Look, the treasure was never in Scotland, okay? Then what was the point of all that, huh? Of the St. Dismas Look, Cross? it's like I said. I think Avery was recruiting people. The cross was an invitation. The caves were just some sort of uh, initiation. Oh, so we all passed, huh? Congrats, Victor. We get eye patches and parrots now. I don't get it. Why the hell would they go to all that bother just to weed people out? To protect themselves. Look, Avery was the most wanted man in the world at that time. He had to enlist people that he could trust in order to keep their treasure secret. What do you mean, their treasure? Just think about this. Thomas II was a successful pirate in his own right. What would he possibly stand to gain from joining Avery? I think Avery sent out crosses only to the other wealthy pirates like himself. What if they pooled and hid all their treasure together? That would make the guns way all look like chump change. Exactly. Oh, holy shit. Okay, so where exactly in Madagascar are we going? Kings Bay. It was an old pirate haven back in uh, Avery's time. I know it well. It's a big place. Anything more specific? Well, that map chamber completely caved in, so, you know. <laughs> what are you laughing about? people who survived the caves, the recruits, what's the one thing they would have left with? There's a volcano on this. <sighs> There's a volcano near King's Bay. Which means we need to get a move on. And it also means that this chapter is coming to a very rapid conclusion. I hope you've enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.